All right, moving on to worship. I'll say just a couple things. I mentioned icons. Icons were and are still venerated by Eastern Orthodox Christians. Um, and the idea is not that these are worshipped, but that these are means by which the people on the icons are revered. Um, so you see the icon on the right of the Holy Trinity. Um, the idea is that uh, by gazing upon the icon, the spiritual, the person who's on the icon or the spiritual concept that's conveyed uh, brings grace to the viewer. In a typical Orthodox church, there is a, what's called a templon that's covered with icons. You can see in the picture there. Um, that's at the head of the church. There was a controversy over icons in the 8th century, and some in the East felt like they were not appropriate, that they were breaking the commandments about making graven images. But ultimately, the church ruled that they were acceptable and even desirable to help in the worship of God. And Orthodox Christians still use those. Monasticism in the Middle Ages was influenced most uh, significantly by this guy, Benedict of Nursia. And what he did was he brought a lot of moderation to monasticism by encouraging monks to live in community and to balance spiritual things like prayer and meditation with manual labor. Um, so he really brought a lot of order and moderation to monasticism. Monks throughout, monks and nuns throughout the Middle Ages were involved in uh, lots and lots of regular prayer, intercessory prayer for the people um, wherever their monastery was, the community around. And uh, they took part and still take part in what are called the canonical hours or the divine office. And most of them pray at eight, eight different set times of the day and night. Uh, there's a couple times in the middle of the night they'll pray. They'll also wake up at 6 a.m. Uh, well, they'll pray at 6 a.m., also 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m. and in the early evening. And these aren't long sessions of prayer. They're very short. Uh, but the monks will recite parts of scripture, sing parts of scripture, and pray. And throughout the Middle Ages, a lot of the scholastics, a lot of the people who knew the most about scripture and could teach it were monks and nuns. In fact, uh, it was fairly common for monks and nuns, through their repetition of prayer and reading of scripture, to memorize huge portions of scripture, sometimes the whole book of Psalms and the whole New Testament because of all the repetition. And that was all seen as part of prayer. Reading scripture was always a preface to prayer. And finally, there were some movements among non-clergy, among lay people. One of these was called the New Devotion. Um, it started in the Netherlands and a community of Windesheim. It was lay people following the methods of of the monastics, but uh, keeping their lay status. So they weren't clergy, but they wanted to follow in the footsteps of the monks and come closer to God through using some of the same means of, of Bible reading and meditation and prayer, devotion to Christ. One of the texts that's very famous that comes out of this tradition is The Imitation of Christ by uh, Thomas, who was from Kempis. He was part of this community. <clears throat> and throughout the Middle Ages, there were also communities who were not approved by the church and who were considered heretics. Some of those we, um, well, depending on your tradition, some of those communities from the Middle Ages, Protestants would find a lot of harmony with. And some of them were sort of way out there as far as their beliefs. They were dualistic. They were Neoplatonists. They were, we would, we would say, heretical. 